Hello everyone, my name is Endor, and you know what? Don't Hung Me I'm Scared is pretty great, isn't it? It's very colorful. And you know what? Those different styles of animation used in the show and also in the YouTube series is pretty cool. Also very impressive. I mean, you gotta do a lot of work to make all that stuff work together. It's colorful, surreal, and it's a fun adventure to experience, despite how most of it takes place in, like, a house. Plus, I mean, who doesn't love Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck? They all play off each other well. I mean, with Red Guy being the more mature and calm one, Yellow Guy being naive yet willing to learn, and Duck being, uh, himself. And we have finished the chicken picnic. But you know what? They aren't who we're talking about today. Au contraire. Today, we're talking about the teachers. Yeah, them. Those mysterious characters who just love showing up out of nowhere to teach our main characters about various topics. Usually with a special song, too. But of course, in Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, things aren't always as they seem especially when it comes to those teachers. For the most part, you can always expect the lessons from the teachers to give some kind of weird twist. Usually from something weird to horrifying or disgusting. But now it's time to answer the question, which teacher is the most malicious of them all? There's only one way to settle who's more evil than who, and I guess it's come to the ranking. All right, here's a quick explanation of how we're doing this. This ranking is not about every single individual teacher in the franchise. It's about every teacher or group of teachers involved in the main lesson of the series, meaning we have 12 spots total for the ranking. This is because in order to discuss the moral compass of the teachers, they'll need to have some considerable screen time. So no machine teachers and none of those like little background teachers except for the ones who work in a group together. Because if they work in a group, then we know that they all have some kind of similar moral standing, so they'll be as good or evil as each other. We'll also be comparing the pros and cons of each teacher's actions to determine exactly how good or evil they are in comparison to the others. All right, let's get to it, shall we? All right, in 12th place, being the most good of all the teachers is... I hear you guys don't think electricity is cool, huh? Is that the deal? Um, yes. Electracy! Alright, I'm pretty sure there's no surprise to anyone watching this video. Okay, let's quickly go over the pros and cons of Electracy. Pros! She was excited and wanted to teach the puppets why electricity is great in the first place. She was so good at teaching that Red Guy and Duck became obsessed with electricity. She isn't rude or aggressive in any way to any of the puppets. She's just nice the entire way. Even when she's malfunctioning, she tries to stop Red Guy and Duck from overloading the electrical system. And she was extremely forgiving when she gets her batteries back, literally just going back into her box and ignoring like anything bad happened to her. She does have two cons though. She kills Yellow Guy's pet to see if it's electric, and also she shocks Yellow Guy in the electric chair. But in all honesty, it's actually not that bad compared to what she could have done. Like, they took out her batteries and gave it to Yellow Guy, and then when she got her batteries back, she didn't have any vengeful spare towards them. She wasn't even angry. Also, her song is a banger, dude. Come on. She's very encouraging, very sweet, and she's a no-brainer for the number 12 spot. I mean, come on. All right, and in 11th place, we have... It's rude. Did somebody say... Transport! <laughs> um, <sighs> I don't think so. <gasps> Choo Choo! Or the Transport Man, whatever you want to call him. Alright, pros and cons. He tries teaching the puppets about transport, even if it was very slobberly done. While he's passed out, he allows the puppets to drive out of their house for once. And that was really good for Red Guy. He was really striving to get out of that house in that episode. His GPS machine tries to help the puppets go somewhere, but they keep denying all their location choices. Which I guess makes sense, she was picking some really strange places. And of course, he never had any ulterior motives and just wanted to teach them in the first place. Alright, his cons. He hits Red Guy in the face with his wooden cane. He made a mess on the puppet's floor with his black medicine stuff. And of course, with the black medicine stuff, he got mad at Duck for the ticket mess, even though he's the one who made the stain in the first place. But here's the thing about Choo Choo, or the transport man, whatever. He's old, so all his really bad attitudes or mistakes can be attributed to his age. It feels like he could have been a much nicer teacher if he was younger, but I think the age has gone to his head and now he's... He's all crumpy! I'm a train! 
So putting him in 11th place, making him the second most good-hearted of the teachers just makes sense to me. All right, I'm not sure if this is gonna be a surprise to anyone watching, but in 10th place, for goodness, we have wow, look. Colin the Computer. You know, this actually came as a shock to me too. I was not expecting Colin to be this, like, low in terms of evilness and high in terms of goodness. All right, let's go over his pros and cons. Pros, he's nice to the puppets for the most part, even becoming nicer over time as the franchise progresses. His digital world is actually a lot of fun for the puppets and they enjoy it like the entire time, except for Red Guy, I guess. While he was aggressive the first time he met the puppets, he doesn't mind being touched anymore. In fact, he actually <laughs> lets the puppets use him for one day a year. And that day year is called Computer Day, in which he actually spends time with the puppets for the entire day, allowing them to surf the web. He also compliments Duck on his grip on the mouse. When Yellow Guy is stuck in his brain world against Warren, he actually offers help because he cares about Yellow Guy and the other puppets. At the end of Friendship, he gives the puppets a spherical computer that he made himself so they can use it to surf the internet whenever they want. And it's all thanks for them teaching him about friendship. He also loves the puppets, genuinely. He has so much good going for him, you know? But what are his cons? Well, first off, he stole the spotlight of his episode from Gilbert the Globe. He was constantly ignoring and interrupting Rad Guy when he first met them in the first place. He pokes Yellow Guy in the face with his mouse hand. He randomly brings the puppets into the digital world while enraged at Rad Guy when he touched them. So that was a little bit of like a tiny little twist. This one's like a, a sort of con because it's like a joke, but I guess it's part of the world. So it makes sense to include it. He thinks freelancers deserve to die, so I guess that means he has some kind of non-value to some people's lives, Is I guess if they're freelancers. So yeah, I was surprised. Colin is actually very good. I think it's kind of implied that once the machine was destroyed in Don't Have Me I'm Scared 6, the teachers were freed from its influence, so now they're, they have free will again, and none of them were that evil in the first place. And this goes especially for Colin. Like, even in his debut episode, he wasn't that evil. In fact, I don't think he was evil. He got mad for being touched, and then he brought them into the digital world, but he didn't do anything. It starts going a little bit uh, crazy, but then Red Guy escapes and goes into a different room. It it's weird. I you expect me to explain, don't have me, I'm scared? You know how hard that is? But anyway, yes, Colin the Computer is in the 10th spot, and he's actually surprisingly good. All right, in ninth place, we have... Hi! Ah, uh, yes, Coffin. Let's go over his pros and cons, shall we? All right, pros. Has a mainly calm disposition while teaching the puppets. He didn't get aggressive in any way, and he was literally just doing what he was meant to do in the first place. He does prove that Doug is actually dead. Like, he cuts off the finger and it doesn't hurt. It comes out with smoke. So he was right in the first place. Even when they're in the graveyard, he gives the puppets a chance to oppose Duck being dead, although Yellow Guy wasn't able to say anything in time. He's very forgiving of the annoyance that the puppets put him through until Duck starts going really far, like way too far. Duck puts scratches in him, he pees in him, he keeps calling him in when he doesn't need him, so I can understand why he gets so annoyed. He even has assistants that he sends to help Red Guy and Yellow Guy, you know, grief properly. Meaning he was actually just trying to teach and he had no secret motive. He was just doing what his job was. Of course, there are a couple of cons. He takes Duck to the grave and buries him alive, sort of. I mean, he's dead, but he's conscious. He's consciously dead, but he's actually supposed to be in the grave. He was dead, so it's like a sort of con. He interrupts and insults Yellow Guy's amazing trumpet playing. I like. What the heck was that? And he does get aggressive and angry towards Duck when he gets just too annoyed. But again, that's like a sort of con. It makes sense. I mean, you saw what Duck, he peed in him. So yeah, Coffin is definitely not evil in any way. He's sort of disturbing. He is a walking coffin after all, but he was very nice. I mean, he was, he was trying to be as calm as he possibly could during the situation. Like despite his really creatively animated entrance, he was not at all evil in any way. 
Wow, four teachers in and none of them have been evil. That's kind of interesting, don't you think? All right, and number eight we have... What's your favorite idea? Mine is being creative. How do you get the idea? I just try to think creatively. Yep, Sketchbook, the one who started it all. So comparing the pros and cons of Sketchbook was kind of interesting. Of course, because, you know, it's from the first Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. And the thing that's a little bit weird about that is because, well, it was like before it was going to be a proper series. It seems like it was a one-off. I mean, just look at the puppets. And of course, it was a bit of a different twist in the original Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Let's go over the pros and cons of Sketchbook. All right, pros. She teaches the puppets how to see creatively. And she convinces the puppets to never be creative again after, well, the insanity that happens after they do get creative. And her two cons are honestly more of being a jerk rather than being evil. She ruined Yellow Guy's painting by pouring ink all over it. And she made Yellow Guy feel bad by saying his favorite color green was not creative. <laughs> but um, the thing about the first Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is that the twist didn't involve the teacher being evil. The twist was that the puppets, when they got creative, they kind of became evil. And like I said before, after the entire crazy twist happens, she convinces the puppets to never be creative again. Like, she didn't expect all that to happen. It caught her off guard as well. It's really what got her into this placement because, well, she's not evil, but she's also not that great. She's a, a tiny bit of a jerk. And there's not really much else to say about her after that. But yeah, just a bit of a reminder that in the first Don't Hang Me, I'm Scared, the twist involved the puppets and not the teacher. And now in the seventh place, we have... What do you think we should do? Oh my, will you look at the time? I'd better get going. <laughs> Who is this? Briefcase. The first teacher to bring us back to the world of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Let's go over his pros and cons. Pros. He was generally kind for the most part throughout the episode. He corrects Yellow Guy by telling him that what's on his shoulder isn't a job, but a welt. When our guy says that having a bunch of things to do because of a job will be stressful, he tells him, if you have the right job, it isn't stressful at all and can be enjoyable. He starts showing the puppets what jobs are and helping them find what's right for them. And at the end of the episode, he gives Duck a coin for a job well done. But uh, here's his con. He slaps Yellow Guy with a ruler. He forces his brother, unemployed Brendan, to sing about how shameful unemployment is. And speaking of which, he calls his brother, unemployed Brendan, despite how Brendan actually hates being called that. He abandons the puppets in a factory for 40 years, only to come back and reset them to the past or the present day, whatever you want to consider it. And in doing so, he takes Yellow Guy away from his wife and kid. Oh, and that coin he gave Doug for a job well done? Well, uh... It goes into his eye, but that seems to have been an accident. Briefcase is the first teacher to be, uh, he's still, like, he's sort of a neutral ground now. Because here's the thing, he was kind and, you know, he was teaching the puppets, getting them interested in the concept of jobs, and they wanted to get some as well. But then he abandons them. That's kind of the thing. He, he leaves them alone in a factory, and then after having them live 40 years in that setting, he resets them back to the past. And that's sort of where the evilness comes from because he doesn't even acknowledge it. He just sort of shows up and they're all like, wait, wait what? <laughs> like, wh what just happened? And they have knowledge of what just happened. They live those lives, except for Doug, I guess. But seriously, you gotta feel bad for Yellow Guy. He lived a life and then you just taken away from it his loved ones claire and janet and now they just don't exist or at least janet doesn't exist claire probably still exists in the factory but you know and of course he's mean to brendan like come on cut brendan some slack man but yeah that's that's briefcase it's a bit of a neutral neutral teacher but still i think uh he's a, a little bit gooder than he is bad it, i guess and in sixth place, we have... How can you be sleepy if you don't know how to have dreams? No, I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know how to have dreams. No, no. The Lamp. Lamp is also another interesting twist of a character because he's, his debut is that he is evil, but he also comes back as well. 
Let's go over his pros and cons. Pros. Even though he did start, you know, singing his song despite how Yellow Guy didn't want him to, at some point we see that he just starts singing at the side of the room, annoying Yellow Guy but not really hurting him anymore. When Duck goes into the grave, he tells Yellow Guy his own unique theory of what happens when we die. And that kind of brings up another pro, which is that, you know, he sits silently next to Yellow Guy's bed. I guess he's like an acquaintance? He's not really doing anything, he just kind of sits there and I guess sometimes he talks to them. But then we have his cons. He forces his lesson onto Yellow Guy, even bringing him to his, like, dream world, which is a 2D dream world. And while he's singing to him, Yellow Guy's pleading for him to stop and leave him alone, but, you know... You can have a dream about burning your friend. And speaking of which, throughout his song, he is making fun of Yellow Guy losing his friends. And of course, he drowns Yellow Guy in oil twice. He does it in the dream world and in real life. Like, well, what the heck? Well, Lamb doesn't really get that much screen time, even in his original debut, because that's when we learn about the machine, which is kind of implied to have a bit of a influence on the teachers. So when the machine is broken, he's more of his real self in the actual show. Where he's calm, he didn't really hurt, he doesn't do anything except sit there, like I said. But unfortunately, while he would probably be a little bit lower on the list, making him more good, he doesn't get enough screen time in either form to really judge his uh, character. But it's still a respectable spot. I think uh, if Don't Hug Me I'm Scared continues past this point and we get more of Lamp, he would move higher in terms of good, but lower in terms of evil. And in fifth place we have... What are you supposed to be? I, I'm Warren the Eagle, fully qualified friendship expert. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Warren the Eagle. All right, pros and cons. Pros. He initially showed up to generally teach the puppets about friendship since they were being mean to Yellow Guy. I mean, they sent they had to censor whatever they said to him. He was giving good friendship advice throughout his lesson. He was teaching them, you know, good things. And after a little bit, he was proven right about the puppet's disrespect towards Yellow Guy since he does retreat to his brain and he knew that was the case. So he knows his stuff, genuinely. And when Yellow Guy does retreat to his brain, he does agree to help them out, even though going into the brain to get <laughs> the suspect out is not part of the OK Stop organization service. But unfortunately, most of those pros come with cons as well. He got involved in the puppet's business out of nowhere. I mean, he was just being really nosy. We can tell that he was fired for harassment towards the other employees, and that's why he's no longer part of the OK Stop organization. And now he uses the OK Stop learning materials and branding, despite how he's not involved with them anymore. So that's definitely illegal. And even though he was giving good friendship advice, he's kind of too dense or self-obsessed to use the advice himself. When he went into Yellow Guy's mind to get him out of there, he immediately made even the brain friends go away by being annoying. And then he uh, annoyed shy imaginary older brother to the point where he literally uh, canceled his life subscription, we'll say that. After he destroys Yellow Guy's brain, he starts following him through the brain so Yellow Guy can't even escape Warren in his home mind. And through his chase, he ends up distorting Yellow Guy's mind as well, until finally he becomes a giant monster and attacks Yellow Guy by being like, Friend. So yeah, Warren is definitely uh, more evil than he is good. Although in a weird way, I kind of feel bad for him. He's annoying, but at the same time, he, he was getting bullied. I mean, they just start insulting him, even Colin. He's also uh, ugly, I mean, <laughs> we can't really put it any other way than that. He is disgusting to look at. But you know what, that makes us love him more, doesn't it? Warren is a bit of an unfortunate teacher, but he ends up taking it too far himself, and that's what gets him higher on the list for being evil. Now, in fourth place, we have... There's always time for a song. What? Who is that? Tony the Talking Clock. Bros, he got the puppets interested in the topic of time for like a little bit. In the main show, he watched the puppets quietly throughout the series, just kind of hanging there, like throughout the entire thing. He's just sitting there. And when Time Child comes into their home, when they're for the first time ever just not there, he lets them know that they aren't there. Okay, but uh, his cons. He almost caused the puppets to miss their show. 
I mean, he was. they were telling him that they didn't want to learn about time because they're trying to watch a show, but he just kind of ignores that. He gives the puppets a bath without their consent. He just sort of puts them in the bath. While he's teaching them, he's just being rude and aggressive. And then whenever they kind of defy him or, you know, go against him in any way, he just get, he just mean. What a big jerk. He destroys Duck's house of cards for no reason. When Duck starts, uh, you know, questioning his teachings, he starts making an extremely high-pitched beeping noise, and that causes uh, pain to all of them and makes Yellow Guy's ears bleed because he's too dumb to cover his ears. And then, of course, the big kicker. He kills the puppets by rapidly aging them into corpses. And to make things worse, Yellow Guy's literally pleading for him to stop, but Tony's like, I'm a clock. Yeah, Tony. Not looking good for you in terms of goodness, buddy. I will give him this. This episode is great. I do love time. Definitely one of my favorites as well. And in third place, we have... Did you know the preservatives... Huh? <laughs> oh dear, Tommy. Looks like these guys need our help. Hooray, Lily. There's nothing we like more than to help. Um, is he talking to us? Lily and Todney. Yeah, we're definitely now in the more evil of the teachers. Let's go over these uh, siblings' pros and cons. Okay, uh, when it comes to pros, they only have one. They unintentionally taught the puppets that they are a family, allowing them to open the package of Tuttle Dollops and bring them closer together. But now, uh, they're cons. Lily kills the apple that was meant to be the actual teacher of the episode. Todney pees on the floor of the puppet's home. Todney steals a sandwich from the puppet's fridge and then throws it, like barely eaten, onto the ground next to the newly murdered apple. They convince the puppets that they aren't a family by manipulating them. They trick the puppets into entering their home, which is part of their elaborate scheme. They kick Duck out for simply touching Mother's Peace. Their family tree uh, drained Red Guy of his blood. And uh, they kidnapped and forced Yellow Guy to be their family's mother, just so they can qualify for a family-sized bucket of chicken. Lily and Todney are sick in the, in the head, yeah. They're so unsettling. And so is their family. They show their true colors, and uh, turns out that they're like monster humans or demon children. I don't even know what they are. They're just horrifying. I'm pretty sure no one's gonna argue their like third place spot up here. I wonder what happened to their mother. Now in second place, we have... It makes you sad, <laughs> doesn't it? Huh? That there's so much hatred in the world. I hope you don't mind if I ask you a question. A little baby pigeon. Shrignold and the Love Cult. Now this is quite the bunch. Pros and cons? Well, for uh, their one pro, they gave Yellow Guy the tingly feeling of love for a little bit. I don't even know how they did that. Now here's their uh, cons. Shrignold emotionally manipulates Yellow Guy by making him think he's lonely. The Love Cult lie about loving Yellow Guy to give him a false sense of security. They make a bunch of false promises to Yellow Guy, claiming that they will teach him all about love so he can find his special one. They teach Yellow Guy a close-minded, outdated version of love, which only includes men and women being together. They call it pure. They're like, she's made for him and he's made for her. So we can assume that they're against same-sex marriage or romance in any capacity that involves two people of the same sex. They attempt to brainwash Yellow Guy against his will to make him join the cult. And this one's a, a con specifically for Shrignal. It's very much implied that he's brainwashed these other members of the love cult before Yellow Guy. So he's ruined multiple people's lives. And of course, permanently traumatizing Yellow Guy after the event of the episode. Because when he sees Shrignald in the machine again, he very particularly reacting to him, screams, No! <laughs> he's like scared of Shrignald now. Yeah, for being probably the cutest of all the teachers in the franchise, Shrignald and the Love Cult are uh, one of the most evil. It makes you wonder what happened to Shrignald to make him start worshiping that rock head thing really claiming that we can live in harmony and then he does all of that now the moment you've all been waiting for the number one most evil teacher in the entire don't hug me i'm scared franchise and that's that's your body hungry comes from your body get off me but your body it must have to be healthy steak and the healthy band now these ones 
are just straight up evil. I, I there's no, they don't even have pros. They just have cons, tons of cons. Let's go over their cons. First of all, they give incredibly inaccurate teachings about healthy eating and food in general to Duck and Yellow Guy. Steak keeps poking Duck with a fork. Like, can you not do that, please? Throughout their teachings, they make Duck extremely uncomfortable and they ignore him, you know, explaining that he's uncomfortable. Like, they just don't care. They just keep teaching. When Duck starts criticizing the lesson that they're teaching, they kind of just get upset with him. They all invade Duck's personal space. Like, they all get really touchy with him. Of course, they also, uh rip out Duck's guts, killing him horrifically. And to make things worse, they feed Duck's insides in cans to Yellow Guy. Yeah, Steak and the Healthy Band just, they don't have anything good going for them. And I think what makes them even more evil is the fact that Duck is exclaiming throughout the entire time that, you know, he's not feeling comfortable about this. There's no doubt in my mind, or in anyone's mind, that Steak and the Healthy Band are the most evil teachers in Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Oh, and of course, I should also mention the fact that what also kind of confirms that they were evil, even without the machine, is in electricity, we see Steak running through the, the darkness, and he's still talking about healthiness. So yeah, that wasn't the machine's influence. He was literally just evil. And there you have it. All the teachers ranked from good to evil. This was a fun video to make. I really like Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, and I'm assuming you do too if you clicked on this video. And if you enjoyed, I hope you don't mind liking and subscribing. And with all that being said, I hope you all have a good day.